if you get nothing else from this episode, I want women, especially mothers, to get the fact that we have to be very mindful about how we talk to our daughters Mm -hmm. about their hair. In order for us to experience real change, in order for us to claim to be the the queens that we are and self-love and all of that stuff, a woman's crown is one of the most, it's important. It's important. And if you grow up feeling like you don't like your hair, if you grow up with a negative stigma behind your hair, it's going to be a problem that you're going to take and you're going to pass that on to your own children. So we need to break that here. We need to break that now. And I mean, I want mothers, aunties, grandmothers, everybody who, you know, taking care of these babies here to just talk positive and just let them know like how beautiful their strands are and and just talk to them around that, you know, positive affirmations. Because it's really, it's really It's really a big deal. You can ask any black woman out there. They'll tell you. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find dope people that did dope stuff. Today's no difference. Uh, Y'all came bearing gifts. One of y'all gave me a cool shirt from another, I would assume, black-owned company. You can't see it. Can you see it? (laughs) No, I like this all just... All black owned companies, yes? All black owned companies. Plant trees you can eat from. So who is this? Who brands this? Lafont. He's out of uh, New York City. What does this mean to you? Plant trees you can eat from. It's pretty much an idea or concept, right? You plant it and it becomes fruitful. Mm -hmm. So if you run in a business, you keep on planting until you bear fruit. That's real. I think there's a lot of people who uh, plant trees that eat them. Mm. Like mm. we do like certain things or, you know, we cultivate certain relationships and we pour, pour, pour into a relationship that's killing us. So that's the, like, I think the shirt is really, really deep because when you, when you see it, it's not like it automatically means one thing. It's mm-hmm. like to the person that's reading it. So I thought that was really, really cool. But we're not here to talk about the t-shirt brand. This ain't even your company. <laughs> you can't show up. Uh, but uh, I, I, let, let, let's start this. Um, uh, Jill and Jonathan, let me get you to introduce yourself and what you do. Okay, so I'm Jillian Nelson, I'm married to Jonathan Nelson. Together we own and run a natural hair and skincare line called Sunny Denby. Sunny and Denby. Sunny and Denby. What yes. is Denby? So is I grew up, yes, Denby's a place. I grew up in Jamaica and I grew up in a tiny town in the parish of Clarendon called Denby. So, D-E-N-B-I-G-H. D-E-N-B-I-G-H. So um, when our line started and, you know, we were bouncing ideas as to, you know, what we needed to call it, I just wanted to pay homage to Denby because that's where I spent my formative years. And also, you know, it's always sunny in Denby. Denby yeah. is just an awesome place. So it was just a happy, you know, vibrant, sunny feel to it. And that's the kind of vibe I wanted our brand to have. So... Mm. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Sunny and Demby. Sunny Your Denby. idea, Jonathan. Who had whose idea was it? The business or the name? The business. All right. The business is my idea. Okay. So tell me about the, the, the business. The business. So the business started totally by accident. Like, you know, I always say like God kinda fooled me into being a business owner because my, my background was corporate. Um, I spent 17 years as a college professor and that was really my life. That was really all I knew. And, um, you know, over the years of us being together, Jonathan would always say like, you know, you make such good stuff. Like, you know, people would really like the stuff, but I never considered myself a business owner. I never considered myself a seller or anything. You know, I was just kind of happy with working a job, being a mom, being a wife. And that was it. So, um, at the end of, 2018, like, you know, I just kind of went into this like period of depression. I just started feeling sad. I just started feeling like there was something else I needed to be doing. And I didn't know what that was. So I went to him and I. Why were you depressed? Why were you sad? I felt like I wasn't living in my truth. I felt like um, I wasn't walking in my purpose. Like, I really knew that even though I was wife and mom and professional, I just felt like that wasn't it. But so I, let, me, let me ask you real quick. And I'm, I'm sorry. We'll yeah, 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 yeah. But when you say you weren't walking in your truth, what does that mean exactly? Um, I was working a job 
I was doing work, but it wasn't feeding my soul. Mm. Okay. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. Like I was making money, you know, but it wasn't about the money. I felt like there was something else I needed to scratch on, you know? Mm. So, um, I mean, I enjoyed the job, but it's a different feeling now, like making our products and, you know, I really feel like we're being impactful. So I think that I was kind of feeling that void. Like I didn't have the feeling I have now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I mean by that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you're just walking around the house trying to, <laughs> did you have, a? so you were already making products though? I was like for years, like, you know, I would make stuff for my daughters. Like Jonathan had really bad mm. eczema. and. Like <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's our cocoa butter, butter body really butter. Like a, it's like a pie. Yeah, huh? yeah that's our cocoa yeah, that's butter body gold. butter. Our customers Dang. go crazy for that one. Can I so have yeah, that's your thing. I use, yours. Yeah. I use cocoa. No, I use shea butter. Mm -hmm. Whatever the Palmers is. Mm. 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 That's what mm. we going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing Palmers. Yeah. I, having a palm was, I thought Palmers was. I put it to you this way. Every shea butter ain't like our shea butter. I put it to you that way. She was making those products six years before she even birthed a company. Mm. So to all your entrepreneurs out there, you probably already have the skill set for the business that you need to start. You mm. just haven't realized it yet. Oh, you're talking good. Go on and introduce yourself. We ain't even, we ain't start <laughs> oh, we ain't even did it. You oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's talking good. Go ahead. Introduce um, yourself. My name is Jonathan Nelson. I run Sunny and Demi with my wife, my kids, uh, my mother-in-law, my mom, my brother-in-law. So it's three generations running the same business. And uh, it started as her goal, her brand, and we just all kind of like wrap our arms around her and uh, just, you know, figuring it out. But it's, it's all based off a need that she felt in her life and then also based on a skill set she already had. Mm. So a lot of people are chasing skill sets they already don't have to start a business instead of just using what you already have to start a business. I really want to smell like this. Like, you should. I want, I like, put it on. I can't wait to put it on <laughs> so that I can smell like Your this. Your wife's going to steal it, so you may want to hide it. Oh it yeah, she's she going to love it. I already she's know. She's me. Uh, and I, exactly. That's the goal. I mean, in a good way. <laughs> this, okay. All right. So you were, you were putting together this... Um, this, how did you... Okay, the first innovation... Is this cocoa butter or shea butter? Cocoa butter. So Let me it, just read the directions. Right. It had, I mean, it started mm -hmm. ingredients. Shea butter, mango butter, cocoa butter, castor oil, olive oil, coconut oil, olive oil, vitamin E. Mm -hmm. These are all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Natural ingredients, yeah. Right. Here's the thing. Why can't I just make this if I got the ingredients that you got? Ooh, you want to answer that or you want me to answer that? <laughs> because... I want to hear both of y'all answer all okay. right. So my answer is going to be, you have to know what you're doing. There are phases to different things. Like when you're mixing oils and butters and herbs and all kinds yeah. of stuff, you can't just throw it all in a bucket and mix it up. You kind of have to know what you're doing. It's a lot of trial and error. I'm self-taught. Like, you know, I just think it's a gift that I've gotten from God. Like a lot of these um, formulations we have, for example, like even our oil, like I'll take naps during the daytime. And complete formulations will just come to me. Like, I'll just dream about certain things and I'll wake up really? and I'll make it. And yeah, that's how we got this one. This was a whole dream right here. And um, this is like a bestseller for people who are balding, alopecia, all of that stuff. So, mm. Mm. Herbal growth oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the difference between the, the intensive herbal and the intensive? Yeah. So... I mean, we could start with the visual. You see that the herbal growth oil has herbs in it, like when you shake it up. Mm -hmm. And all those herbs, we hand-selected those herbs because they stimulate growth and they cause your, um, you know, your strands to grow. Intensive scalp oil, it's a stronger oil. You can't see the herbs in it. Super duper strong. We use this for like um, a lot of people who like are experiencing going through chemo, alopecia, mm -hmm balding, you know, anywhere that you have like a bald spot, you've been really Whoa, trying to... hold on, hold on. I could rub that on my hairline? You, that's why yep. I brought it for you, David, yes. <laughs> no shade, but... No, 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 I'm not. Like no, no shade. Anybody <laughs> can use it, but you can seriously, like, you can use it on your beard. You can use it on your, um, on your head. 
you so, know. Hold on, um, hold on. Which one is the hairline? Or? So it depends. How <laughs> aggressive you trying to go? You're trying to have. I hair. haven't had a hairline for a decade. Okay, I okay. definitely recommend the intensive. That's the stronger so one. So you mean to tell me if I rub this on my hairline? If your follicles aren't dead, right? And I don't think they're dead because you. I don't you, know if they're dead or not. Well, you probably need to go to a dermatologist. Yeah, okay, but if I feel your head, I can probably you tell you. It, it might be me? right here. The dead. Yeah. Your um your hairline is like receding, but the rest of this will definitely grow in. Well, I mean, this is cool. Mm-hmm. I'm good up mm-hmm. here. It's just yes. the fat is here. It's here. So I want you to I want you to start using it. Take a before and after picture, and let me know in about a month. We'll take another one in about a month, and we'll see if you had any um any progress. But this won't this won't bring my hairline back if the follicles are dead. If the follicles are dead. Now nine times out of ten, when the follicles dies because you've had like some kind of traumatic situation going on, maybe like extended high fevers or somebody like yanked, you know, maybe you had, you know, cornrows back in the day and somebody yanked, yanked your um, roots out or something. But nine times out of 10, they're just dormant. They're not dead. So with stimulation and scalp massages and all of that stuff, we could definitely see what happens. So I was thinking about, I didn't do it. I was thinking about it. (laughs) But you know the little graph joint? Don't do it. No, why not? Try this first. My friend did it. It's, it's I'm telling you, I'm trying to save you a lot of a lot of trauma that you don't need. Try try this first. I mean, you only need like a month or two. Just do it once in the morning. You got to be consistent, one, yes. though. You got to be don't consistent. Don't take the whole time off, Dave. Just, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it on like holy water. Like, hit me right. Okay. Yeah, All yeah. right. So, so I just take a little dab. Uh-huh. And you only want to put this in your problem area. So, yes. And you just do like a nice, you know, five-minute massage. Oh, five morning. Minutes? Yeah. Or if oh, you really want to get, you know, if you really want to get into it, you can go to the bathroom and like put a washcloth under warm water mm-hmm. and just set that up there. We want to get the blood flow going. We want to get your um your follicles, you know, active again. What about the beard? I the have... beard is light work. I can already tell the beard is going to grow. What? Yes. On, the beard get... is light. You putting well, that on too? Oh, I, <laughs> Look, right you going to have hair, bud. Because <laughs> the patches, yes. I, you know, like in certain parts of your beard just don't Oh, grow. that's light work. Yeah, that's light work. Really? I could look at it and tell. Yes. I can get a full beard? You can get... You see Jonathan's beard? We got to tell you... But was you like... Was you patchy though before? He was never patchy because to be honest, I've been making this forever, David. It's it's not like... This isn't something that I just started doing. Like, you know, our business started like, you know, three years ago. But to be honest, we've been making this for like maybe what? Nine, ten years now? This is... This is... This will be the fourth year of our business. She's been making these products for 10 years and yeah. she's been making it for our daughters and myself, everybody in the house. Because Jonathan Any had extra. really bad eczema. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we have three children and he was trying to tell me he couldn't wash bottles. He couldn't, you know, bathe the kids. He couldn't do anything involving water. And I'm like, well, that's not going to work. Why I'm not. not what do you mean? He had eczema, eczema like so crazy. bad. Like, you know, whenever he'd put his hand under water, he'd break up between his fingers, like under his ring and all of that stuff. Mm. So I made um, our other body butter, which is our signature body butter made for people who have skin conditions. And you could look at his hands and you could tell he hasn't had a breakout in years. So my face isn't too shiny, is it? No, you're good. You're good. You're You're good. good. Mm -hmm. You're good. But keep using it, though, for real. So I think what I'm having is eczema. What's this right here? Those are liver spots. Blotches, huh? They call them liver spots. Liver spots? Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, it's kind of like a vertiligo type situation, but not as bad. I don't think, huh? Yeah, yeah, but it's not as bad as um, it's not as bad as that. You could um use a body butter on your hands, like um consistently. I'm using all this stuff. No, I'm serious. Yeah. It's good. I'm, like, I'm, I'm actually like, excited. You should see like, our testimonials. Like, <laughs> like they work, work. You know, and I know, like we're not used to buying things that work, but they really, really work. You know, um, and they're super good, and our customers it's love them. Small, Your wife's gonna love you, David. That's why it's a luxury it's brand. My dessert. That's why it's a luxury yeah. brand. Snack. <laughs> oh, snack. <laughs> I smell like a snack right now. All right, so, so your first concoction, like mm-hmm. what, what, what were you trying to accomplish when you first started? So I have two daughters. My daughters are twenty-two months apart. And I had two little girls and they both have, I don't know if you're familiar with hair types, but they both have like type four hair, which is like, you know, coarser, coilier curls. That's type and four? Type four. How many types mm-hmm. are there? Four. One, two, three, four. You know, can you run through them real quick? Okay. So type one is like maybe Caucasian people with really bone straight hair, mm-hmm. right? Then you also, within each hair type, it's like type, um, you have A, B, and C. So that the A, B, and C determines the, how coily 
the strands are. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's type one, there's type two, um, that would be like maybe, um, Caucasian people that have like curlier type hair, right? Mm -hmm. Not, not bone straight. Right. Then you have type three, which would be maybe I'd say maybe like some Hispanic people, you know, they have a little. Like Reese, you got the curls? Yeah. 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 So he's three. Yeah. Because he's black. Right. Or like her, her, she has beautiful, your hair is like, amazing for real for real and then type four is like mine like tight you know coily um curls so my girls had my type of hair right Mm -hmm. so um i don't know you have a daughter you're gonna experience this soon wash day for black women can be a very long and belaborous and in some cases they were arguing about it yesterday so Mm -hmm. you already know right my wife doesn't want to take her hair she's embraced she's like i don't want to take it out because i have to Exactly. In my, in my mind, I'm like, I had braids before. You just take it out, you wash it. No. But hers is different. Mm-mm. It's different. And then with little kids, you know, it's hard to explain to them. They cry. They expect it to be long and drawn out and traumatic. They don't want that. They want to go play. So I had these two daughters wash day. They're crying. I'm crying. He's holding the girls down over the sink so I could, you know, get through the wash day process. And I'm like, this has got to get better because... Even before these girls are old enough to even recognize how beautiful they are, they're already experiencing this trauma of Mm. wash day, right? So it's off the break. It's a negative connotation with their strands, right? Dang, that's that's actually a deep point because you don't know when kids are growing up, like especially like black kids, and I don't know if you're in a, like a mixed school or whatever, mm-hmm. but there's always this conversation oh, yeah. about black hair, oh, yeah. and I don't like my hair. And right, I would, that's a whole that thing. Trauma starts from little, okay. like like little, like your wash day experiences, the way your 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 mom or your grandmother or your auntie talks to you about your hair. Oh my God, you got all this hair. Oh, I can't. You know your hair, your hair, your hair. Nine times out of ten, it's not positive. I remember growing up and my mom telling me, oh, my God, your hair is so coarse. You know, I never had long hair, but it was always very thick and rough. And that was just I hated my hair, you know, and it wasn't until I didn't embrace my natural hair until I was like well in my 30s. You know, and the only reason why I did was because I felt like such a hypocrite. I had these two daughters telling them how beautiful their curly coils were. And here I am with a floor length weave. Right. So at some point, I just felt like really hypocritical. And I remember I had some crochet braids in and I took those off for the last time. I'm like, this is it. After I take it out, whatever is under there, I'm going to have to deal with it. I'm going to have to work with it. That's what God gave me. I'm going to have to love it and find a way to deal with it. And that's what I did, you know, because I'm over here telling the girls, you're beautiful. You're a black queen. You got nice hair. And they never see my hair. Well, Mm. mommy, what does your hair look like? Mommy didn't even know what her, her hair looked like. I had never seen it. You know, for my my earliest memories, I had a relaxer, you know, prior to like my mom telling me like, oh, your hair was thick and, you know, my fingers would hurt, combing it. She put a relaxer in real quick. She didn't have to deal with that. You know, so I had a relaxer at like 11, 12. So, so you never got a chance to experience your I, hair. No. And whatever it was, my my um my impression of it was it was terrible. So I didn't even want to see it. You know, so we have to be very mindful and it starts really young because I think black women in general, we're just in the age where for the first time in maybe history, we are forced and embracing our natural strands. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing, we get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just the morningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. We had relaxers. We had jerry curls. We, we do braids. We do wigs. And it's like a whole, you know, each era we go through, it's a different thing. And I think we're finally in the space where we're taking that off. We're taking the Band-Aid off. We're getting rid of the relaxers. We're getting rid, rid of the, um, you know, extensions and the hot combs and all of that stuff. And we're now forced to look at this thing that, you know, God gave it to us. We can't change it. Right. You know, and we have to figure out 
how do I how do I deal with it? You know, how do I love these strands? How do I make it look good? How do I conform it to do what I want it to do? How and long, that's, how, mm-hmm. how, I'm sorry, how long have you been married? We've been married <laughs> forever. Um, <laughs> it, it'll be 19 years in August. Yeah, 19 years. Yeah. yeah, 19 years. And we've been together for 26 years. I was actually 18 when I met him. He was 19 and we've been rocking ever since. Yeah. Okay, Jonathan, I need yes, an honest sir. answer. Yes, sir. Right? It's all honesty over here for real. So, too, you, you, you met her mm-hmm. with, the, with the weave. Mm-hmm. Right? No, I had a shortcut when you met me, haircut. but it was relaxed. Yeah. It was relaxed. Yeah, it was right. relaxed. So, but you mm-hmm. were relaxed. Yeah. So you were how old when you met? Eighteen. I was eighteen, 18 when I met him. So for uh, over a decade, you don't know what her hair like looks like, or she don't know what her hair looks like. Mm-mm. What was the transition in mindset, or how did she change as a person when she decided to go this other route? Did you say, "Ah, right, baby, don't you?" Want to no, you that? know what? She was hesitant to. Um, she was hesitant to even, I remember to cut her hair. Mm-hmm. She was hesitant. She was like, man, I was like, I've been going to my barber for like 20 years. Like I know him from like high school, mm-hmm. right? So I was like, nah, let me just call my barber. Let him know my wife's going to come through. I'll bring you over there. And she was but like, your hair was short know. already. It was Yeah, but short. it wasn't this short. I, yeah. I mean, I had hair. It wasn't like, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I was like, just, just embrace it, man. I think... Uh, as black men, we just, we gotta, like, I'm be honest with you, there's a lot of black men who are with black women, they don't know what their hair look like. Mm. I mean, I may start some trouble. Exactly, you may not know. You may not know, right? She may not know, Let me right? Think. <laughs> I won't start yeah. no trouble there, you know? I won't start, start no trouble. I won't start no trouble. The trouble has begun. And, um, <laughs> and, um, but it's very important because that's a huge part of confidence. Uh, I mean, she, we, we get as a company hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails and DMs. We got like thousands of testimonials, DMs. Ask her, beautiful black women. They're like, yeah. I don't like my hair on a daily basis. Yeah. So mm. our yeah. mission is, is not just a monetary mission. Our mission is education. That's why you see her going so deep into it. Our mission is to really educate people and get them to where they need to go, let them be confident with their hair. Because, you know, if you don't feel good about your hair, you don't feel good about how you look, how you dress, how are you going to go out there in the world and project it? True. You know, and we're also raising a generation of black women. Black women are raising black women. So we got little daughters now, right? You got a daughter? Mm-hmm. I got two. I got two on top. Right? So I want my daughters to be confident enough, whether it's how they look, their hair, all of that, to go out there in the world to have to deal with all of everything that's going on in the world for them to be confident. I don't want them to come back home and be like, okay, I show the world this is what I think confidence is, but now when I'm in my own home, I'm really not confident. So, right. but what, what was your relationship with black women's hair before your wife went on this transformation? Or you just never thought about it? Like, oh, honey, hair. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm probably speaking for, and I can't speak for every black man, but I'm probably going to speak for every black man. We don't know. It, it, we don't even address don't it. it. It doesn't, hair. we don't think about it. To us, we're like, oh, she got dressed up. She looked great. Oh, you got a new hairdo. Oh, you're going to the hair salon? Okay, that looks mm-hmm. good. That's it. Or we go with, I like your hair long or I like your hair short. Right. That's just it. Did you have a preference at all? Um, Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I don't not think necessarily, so. which means... <laughs> no, I mean, there's different hairstyles. Either the no, no, no. hair, either, I mean, not necessarily. No, I mean, I see her different hairstyles, and I'd be like, oh, that's nice. What's your this preference? Is, um, I like the hairstyle she got now. I bet. For right real? Answer. That's the right I like answer. Right <laughs> he be, he be married. <laughs> I, mean, I like the weed. See, that's a like married man's right. answer. Right. You know, he's like, yeah, hey, I've been married, married for a minute. I've been married for a minute. <laughs> no, but I like her hair now because she's she's confident about it. She likes it. And the reason she has a low hair is we got two daughters. She's like, I'm doing hair all the time. I'm running the business. This is my hairstyle. It's simple for me. I can go ahead and, and take care of my business. Our so, daughters yeah. got crazy hair. Yeah, they got crazy Like, hair. crazy, crazy hair. Down so, I mean, and, by yeah. time, you know, when I first started on my journey on um, Be Natural, he actually helped me because I was so self-conscious. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember taking that weave out of my hair and I had to go to work the next day and I stayed in my office the next day because I just felt I didn't feel good about it, right? The people that saw me were used to me having, prior to that, I had like a weave, right? Mm-hmm. So, when they saw me, it took weeks. They they didn't say I like it. They didn't say I didn't like it. They just looked at me like, oh, okay. 
mm-hmm. you know, and it wasn't like a good, oh, okay, you know what I mean? And me already feeling insecure about it, I kind of just needed validation from somebody, right? Mm. And I remember going, was probably the second day I went to lunch and one of the guys that was a um, security guy, I was walking out the parking lot and he saw me come in and he said, okay, queen, I see you, I like it. Mm. And that, even though my husband had told me that it looked nice and he liked it, just hearing that from somebody else, that gave me the confidence that, and as sad as that sound, you know, I just wasn't confident with it. And I mean, I've been natural ever since. Sometimes I go low. Sometimes I grow it out. I just do whatever I want to do with it, you know. But I mean, I'm just always in a natural state. And don't get me wrong. Our products work for people who have relaxers as well. And I have nothing... Um, against people who choose to go that route. You know, I mean, everybody has a preference. It's your hair. You wear it how you want to wear it. You wear it how you feel good. So, you know, our products are geared towards the natural girl, but we do have quite a few relaxed and, um, you know, color treated um, people that use our um, our products as well. So, you know, to each his own. I mean, David, you may see me next week. I might have a relaxer. I mean, you know, I may feel like, you know, I no longer want to be natural. I mean, it's just a personal well, listen, 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 choice. Man, had to be like maybe eight, ten years ago, probably. You ain't about to have it tomorrow, then. Not tomorrow, <laughs> but I might. Feel good. No, hey, but I'm not. <laughs> no, we <laughs> still tomorrow. No, you're not. You already, you already went on the mission. Okay, anyway. anyway right, because I, I know sure. the danger of it too, like the yeah. chemicals and stuff. Yeah. I, I know how that affects us, like you know our health, and you know, um, black women especially, you know, wearing these weaves and these synthetic hairs, and even human hair, like those things are laden with chemicals and toxins. Mm. You know, and this is where like some of the cancers and the endometriosis and the cysts and the infertility fertility and all these things that we experience as black women, this is where it comes from. Gotcha. So, you know, um, you know, we just, I'm just in a point in my life where I just want to live a clean life. And to me, as much as I can possibly control everything that we use on our body from head to toe is going to be natural because I can make it, you know? So, yeah. You make, you make your own soap too? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So let me, let me get into the first, like the first product. Are you saying, yo, I'm about to take some of this mango oil and see if this works? What was the first? The first product, I like to say it's the first product I perfected because I feel like our hair butter is a perfect, perfect product, hair right? Butter. Hair yeah, butter. I didn't bring any today, but our hair butter is dope. Um, that's the first product I use on my daughter's hair where I saw a change within a few days. It looked more vibrant. Their curls were coiling. It didn't like shrink up as much. It just looked healthy. Like it even it's so good. Like you can put it on your ends and it repairs like split ends. It repairs um, damage. You know, you can use it like directly on your scalp. You can just use it on your strands. It's an amazing product. And that was the first product. Now, keep in mind, David, I had been like going through this trial and error period. I didn't just land on it and made it the first time and it turned out perfect. Like, you know, I had a a bunch of different ones that I made, but this one in particular was really good. And the thing that's good about it is it has growth herbs in it. So it really grows your hair and makes your hair like thick and full as well. So that was the first, first product I made. Which one helped my hairline more? That one or... What, what the oil, um, yeah, yeah, the oil, the oil, good. yeah. But for your daughter, <laughs> I was gonna hit it twice. You're good. You're good. I wish yeah, I had brought the hair butter. It was wild because you really just gave me a vision of a hairline. This is wild. I'm I, serious. I'm telling you, David. About, I just, I just let it like, go. I'm telling so, you. I'm not, telling you. But give me, the, give me the drama of the story. Like you're looking at your daughter's hair, saying, "You know what? I think your daughter. I'm about to have a hairline." Daddy, it's he's coming. about to have a hairline. You, you feel it you tingling, it. David? I feel it tingling, David. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> so did he say he wants the drama? Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, you're looking at your daughter's hair like, yo, I wonder if canola oil work or whatever. I don't know. But, like, where did it, the idea start? You got to tell him about the mistake social media posts. Okay. So this whole thing started with... Um, I told you about the depression and all of that. I was trying to figure out, you know, um, what to do and all that. So the top of 2019, I'm like, all right, um, I feel like I need to do something. I went to him. I said, babe, I think we need to have another kid, right? I feel like I need to give birth to something. And he was like, a child is not it. Whatever it is you need to give birth to, it is not a child. <laughs> I need to give birth to something. Right, to start exactly, a child. right. He was like, we have no more space in this house for anybody yeah. else, you know? So no, that is not it. That's off the table. So I'm like, all right. So I started um, looking at like... Um, 
mentorship programs and like, you know, um, things I could use to like grow my mindset or whatever. And I ran into Neil mm-hmm. back in like 2019 when Neil's program was a thousand dollars. So, you know, this is back in the oh, day, right? For sure, for sure. For sure yeah. Right. So oh, I, when did you start this company in 18 now. 2019, 2019, so 2019. So I was depressed in 18. This started the top of 19. Signed up for um, Neo's program. And you know, Neo, we on a call that night, right? And everybody else in the group had a business. They had an established LLC. I didn't have anything because I was just kind of fishing for ideas. And he's going around the room and he's like helping people troubleshoot their business and, you know, whatever. And he gets to me and he was like, oh, so what is your business? And I'm like, well, I don't really have a business. And he was like, oh, okay. He was like, well, what do you have in your house that you could um, make and like use to make some money or whatever? I'm like, well, I don't really have anything. He was like, well, like, you know, what do you like doing your spare time and stuff? And I'm like, well, you know, I have like shea butter and black soap. Like I make products for my husband and for my kids. He was like, oh, you make natural products? And I'm like, yeah, I make it um, for my family. And he was like, oh, you know, uh, my girl and my um, my daughter are natural. Make some products and, and send them to me. And he's like, start giving your product away. Just make it and give it to people. And I'm like, all right. So I kind of stalled a little bit because I was like scared. But anyway, I did it and I sent it to him. And he hit me up. He was like, yo, these products are really good. He was like, you know, my wife loves it. My daughter loves it. He was like, I really think you have something. You should look into doing this. So I was like, all right. So as part of the mentorship program, like they taught us how to like, um, because I wasn't really big into social media at that time. They taught us how to connect our Instagram and our Facebook together. So when you post on one platform, you know, it would publish on the other. So I thought I was posting on my Instagram because my Instagram followers were people I really didn't know too well. I'm like, I don't care about them too much. My Facebook followers were like my friends I went to school with, some family or whatever. And I didn't want them to know I was having this, you know, transition in my life, you know. So, I'm, I, you know, I was kind of like maybe not embarrassed, but I don't know. I didn't want them to know. So I went ahead and posted it on what I thought was Instagram and it posted on both platforms. And I started it was a video of me whipping um, the, the um, hair butter. And they were like, Jill, what are you making? Is that cake? You making muffins? Like, what are you making? Because it looked like it looked like cake mix, right? It looked like muffin mix. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, um, no, this is like hair butter. They're like, hair butter? Is that what you've been using on the girls' hair? Like, we've been asking you all this time, like, how your girls' hair look like that. And you keep telling us, like, I just I just tell them I use shea butter, right? I didn't really tell them I was putting other stuff in it. I honestly didn't think, and it's not because I was trying to be shady. David, I honestly didn't think anybody wanted it. I thought, like, anybody could do this, like, you know? So they were like, we want it. How much is it? Like, it is not even for sale. What do you mean? How much is it? This is just for me and the kids and the husband. I'm not selling this. They were like, we want it. Can you sell it? I'm like, I don't have a price. What do I sell it for? So I was just making up stuff. I was like, okay, this look like $10 right here. (laughs) This look like five. You know, that's how I was doing it. And my first order, we had eight orders. My friends, they got it. They used it. They was like, oh my God, this stuff is so good. They started telling their mom. So our first set of customers were like my friends from Facebook and their mothers. And then the mother started telling their church sisters. And then it was like, oh, my friend's going through chemo. You got anything for that? And I tell them like this. Well, and that's kind of just how it started. And before we knew it, it just like we didn't even have a website, David. I did. I had a, you know, the note, note section of your phone. Mm-hmm. I was typing like hair butter, $10, shampoo, $15, this. And I would do a screenshot and DM it to people. That was your menu. That was it. That was it. Like I didn't have a website. I didn't have, because this wasn't supposed to be a thing. It really wasn't. It was just something that I did at home. And like I said, God tricked me because that that's the mm-hmm. only way that I would have done it otherwise. I'm not that person, honestly. I'm really to my core. I'm like introvert introverted i'm very shy I'm, I'm not that person so yeah that's for one that's that's really inspirational to a lot of entrepreneurs because they think they gotta have everything perfect when you you're like yo i'm just doing what i do <laughs> yeah but to my question mm-hmm. did before, i not answer your question absolutely not okay sir <laughs> <laughs> how do you how'd you start like how did like the what is the first concoction that Oh, you tried I mean, on your girl's hair and did you try something and try something else? And okay. the very beginning. So I started doing the research because I was just sick and tired of spending my money on products that didn't work. So I, I realized that shea butter was a good base. It was inexpensive and it worked. So I started with um, shea butter and then, you know, we started adding like other oils to it. And I'm all about the natural products. So, so where did you get the shea butter? Was it Palmer's? The, 
No, it was not farmers. My, <laughs> no, it was the farmers. Butter, butter, My, you these farmers? Yeah, yes. farmers. You know I mean? Marvin, you using butter. farmers? No, we got to get you. We got to get you out okay. of the... We, we got to upgrade you guys. We need to upgrade you guys for real, for real. So, um, you know, I was all about... I realized that ingredients mattered. And all ingredients are, are not created equally, right? So I didn't have a lot of money at the time. So I would go to like Amazon and like eBay and I'd try to find like cold pressed virgin um, olive oil and I'd buy like one pound. It's so funny because I started out buying like one pound of shea butter and like now we're buying like 500 pounds. You know, it's like so crazy, but I would and that one pound would last me forever because I was just making it for us. Right. So you start with shea butter as the base. Then you add your oils to it, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Of course, if you're making something thing for skin you want to use different oils than you use for hair not everything that works for skin you know for example coconut oil a lot of people especially a lot of people in the natural world they swear by um coconut oil unrefined coconut oil about coconut oil okay listen coconut Chris. oil is amazing for your skin I was about to say it's been for in your our skin it's good for decades but do not let your wife use it on your daughter's hair because some people it mats up their hair it makes your it acts as a protein Right. And it mats up your hair. It makes your hair really tangled. When you comb it out, you're getting a lot of shedding and breaking. And that's just free game for everybody out there. And I'm going to I just helped a whole demographic of people. OK, stop you using too coconut much oil. Too I much of the sauce. You got to go to the website. You got to go to the website. Do you use coconut oil on your hair? On your hair? Yeah. No, okay. not on your hair, on your skin. Okay. On your skin. Yes. Yeah. Sh- yeah. OK. You used to too, right? On your hair. Yeah, what was your experience on your hair? I'm not doing it. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> like, Real quick. Is all that your hair? Yeah. No? No. no. It's, Hold on. You have to go to a mic or something because they not. Yeah, it would be like a, a dance. Go to where Joe is. Real quick. Um, I was going to say. Oh, wait. You know what? Real quick. My, my, my first experience with hair, like I guess understanding that black women, there's an issue here. Was India Ari song? I'm not my mm. head. I never even thought about mm. it before. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's a dope beat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, a dope <laughs> beat. <laughs> huh? it's a whole it, struggle. Do you know what your hair looks like? You know what your real hair looks like? Okay. It, but you was, once okay, she, earlier, once, she once was you saying, use the products, it's not a struggle. Yeah, so anymore. she said until she was like 30, mm-hmm. she never knew what her real hair looks like because mm-hmm. she always used chemicals or. Used, I had relaxers or, yeah, always had um, relaxers. And I mean, it's just, it just, and, and I mean, if, if, if you get nothing else from this episode, I want women, especially mothers to get the fact that we have to be very mindful about how we talk to our daughters mm-hmm. about their hair in order for us to experience real change, in order for us to claim to be the, the Queens that we are and self-love and all of that stuff. A woman's crown is one of the most, it's important. It's important. And if you grow up feeling like you don't like your hair, if you grow up with a negative stigma behind your hair, it's going to be a problem that you're going to take and you're going to pass that on to your own children. So we need to break that here. We need to break that now. And I mean, I want mothers, aunties, grandmothers, everybody who, you know, taking care of these babies here to just talk positive and just let them know like how beautiful their strands are and and just talk to them around that, you know, positive affirmations, because it's really it's really it's really a big deal. You can ask any black woman out there. They'll tell you. Like, Yo, seriously, listen, it was not a positive conversation last night. My hey, wife, right. my daughter's like, I want to take my hair out. She's yes, like, absolutely not. Like, <laughs> not today. Not? She's like, because I ain't got the time. Exactly. And, you know, you got to take it out. And she's like, I got to wash it. And in my mind, and then, you know, in court, I, I'm i probably going to get in trouble. So, Corey, she was like, um, yo, just teach me how to wash it. And she's like, oh, my gosh, it ain't that simple. No, it's and not. It's a whole conversation. You ever heard about wash day? Yes. A whole day to wash your hair? <laughs> if, yeah. you're yeah. no, if you're lucky. If you're lucky, a day. Join in there. That's for crazy. you. That's for you. That's for you. Not she's for say something. Okay, Jay, going to say something. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 like, if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po- positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So, in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. 
but there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast, but I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby, but I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. I wanted to say what you're saying is so helpful because in my my dad's side of the family, um, I'm the only person with type four hair. And so everybody else is like mixed. So it's always been like a joke. Like my dad will point it out. Like even it was one time at the dinner table with my little cousins. They were like probably seven and 10. And they were like, isn't Jada the only person in the family with uh, that type of hair? Or he'll say, you got N-word hair all the time. Mm-hmm. And he'll be like, isn't Jada the the other way. Oh, mm-hmm, <laughs> they'll be like, mm-hmm. isn't Jada the... dad will say that? Yeah. Like, that's Probably how he's talking. we're not thinking that it creates trauma. But now in this conversation, yeah. it's like, it really does. Yeah, it really, so, really does. Like, when I went natural, um, I think in, in middle school... I, my parents say you ain't got them in that. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But uh, when I went natural, I think I was in middle school, but I did like a transition for like a year or so. So I grew out all the perm. And then after that, I was natural. And I always had a lot of hair. So it was like, it was acceptable that I had natural hair, even though it was like so thick and coarse because it was long. It was long. But then uh, last or uh, two years ago, this girl burned all my hair out mm. and I had to cut it all off. And so... It's like... Hold on, I'm sorry. Can somebody explain out. that? Um, she going to explain it. Yeah, explain that. What did she burn it with? Like, uh, um, you so got to blow... I, she had saw a picture of how someone straightened my hair. And so then she was trying to be like him. Mm-hmm. And then she straightened my hair to the point to where it was fried. It was no right. more curls or nothing. Yeah. And so I was so hurt because I had got attached to my hair because it was like, oh, everyone loved my hair, even though it was so, like like type four and coarse it's but like it oh long. but she has big hair she has long right. hair right. so then once i had to cut it off Hold like on, real quick real quick can you explain the burnt hair so hair? when you burn your hair it's like you change the structure of your hair so when you go back so you you probably did like some kind of blowout or silk press or something right silk press. usually when you add water back to it it reverts back to your curls when you burn your hair when you change the structure of the strand it can't coil back it's just like you have some parts that will curl and some parts that are straight. So the only alternative you have is to cut it off and start over, mm-hmm. you know, and that's why heat is like, that's another thing. Heat for black women's hair, we have to be so, so very careful when adding heat to our hair, you know, make sure that you're using like a good heat protectant because that that's what happens. You break it off, it, yeah. it you know, and I mean, it changes the structure. It yeah. can't coil anymore. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know this was such... A oh, it's a whole thing, issue. David. Like, it's real. It's yeah. a whole thing. And it like, really affects our self-esteem, yeah. honestly. Sorry, I was going to say, so now, like, I don't even wear my real hair unless, like... Well, actually, I don't wear it at all anymore. Like, See? because I'm in my head, it's like, I'm only going to wear my real hair once it gets back to that same length. And it's been mm-hmm. about a year and it's grown like a nice amount. Like it's to my mm-hmm. collarbone, like here now, but mm-hmm. my hair was way longer than that. So mm-hmm. in my head, it's like, I don't want to show my real hair until it's long because it's like in my head, that doesn't feel acceptable. Exactly. You see what, what I'm it saying? Being, like, it's that it we got exactly. you. We got you. Tomorrow. We got you. Take all that stuff out your hair. Wear your real <laughs> hair. You. Own your crown. Okay. Well, she's gonna she's gonna talk to her after the I'm show. I'm gonna talk to her. We're gonna, gonna get her right. So that's a yeah. huge part of it, right? Yeah. Community and education. So we've built like a whole community based on the company and education. Um, it's so crazy. She'll tell people, people will message her, and if you're not confident with the information we're giving you, we'll let you know. You don't have to even buy with us right now. Mm. Because we're not mm. trying to get most people are trying to get a one time sale. Our goal is to get lifetime customers. That's the right. reason why you wear Air Jordans. You've bought that same pair of Jordans probably four different times, four different colorways. How many black and uh, white, black and red Jordans you got? A bunch. Exactly. Because you're a lifetime customer. Why would I want you to buy from me one time and never come back? You know, when you started out, I thought you was about to attack my blackness. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. You were the colonizer shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. The colonizer shoes. Going, but yeah, yeah I, got a pair, right. I mean, I got, a, I, I got a bunch of pairs of right, Jordans right, right there. Right. I'm going to keep on coming back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, 
<laughs> we've learned the whole black thing. Okay. Anyway, all right. So, so you 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 you're mixing these mm-hmm. these concoctions and you're just using them on your family for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't feel confident enough to. I didn't know anybody wanted them, David. Like, I didn't know. Like, I didn't. It, it's so funny because I now I'm in love with this company even more. Oh, thank you. But seriously, like, if I had known, man, do you know how rich I could have been a lot sooner? Keep on, keep on. Yeah. So I just honestly thought, like, everybody has access to shea butter. Everybody can go research oils on butters and herbs. Why is this special? Like, you know. So, and I was just so committed. <laughs> Yo, leave me. Come on, I'm trying. I'm, I'm working on something. Yeah, really. Uh... Come on, it's my self-esteem on the line. Don't lie. Okay, good. I got it. I got yeah, I was just so com- um, committed to like my regular job, you know, working a job and just taking care of the kids that, you know, it, it was nothing for me. So, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. All right, so it becomes a business. Mm-hmm. It becomes a business. First of all, what are y'all doing? Do y'all do this full time right now? Now we do. Now Initially, we do I worked my regular job for two years mm-hmm. while we were doing this. Really? So I just left my job like what? A year and a half? Almost two years ago. Almost two what? years ago, and I'm about, I'm about to retire. I'm I'm done. You still working? Oh, where? Yeah. Where you working? I work I work for the government. You work for the government? Yeah, yeah. Like the highest level of the government. Oh, the highest level. Yeah. For the man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who is the man? I don't even know. Mm. All right. So what? Like, what was the um, the transition of leaving your job? When did it not make sense anymore, or did you set a goal, or how was that process? We could have. I could have left a long time ago, honestly, because I was working. We had made six figures, seven figures. I was still working my job. What? Yeah, because, okay, so a couple of reasons why. Seven figures, you're still working? I was. I was going to work like I have a penny in my account. And nobody knew. I am Jamaican. I am Jamaican. <laughs> I am Jamaican. Y'all work, though. We, yeah, I am Jamaican. So um, I couldn't leave because we had outgrown. We lived in a two-bedroom townhouse. And I'm sorry, where, where were you working? What were you doing? Um, I was a I was a counselor and a professor at a community college. What making how much? Six figures. Where? Mm-hmm. Oh dang! They pay that much? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Counselor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Professor okay. counselor. Yeah, you make yeah. a lot. All right, so you're making six figures there, mm-hmm. which is even harder to leave. I worked at the Cheesecake Factory making thirty thousand. It made no sense. I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. I can make thirty thousand. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad I was only making thirty because if I was making six figures, I'd probably never probably stay. Yeah, you know, after a while, it didn't make sense. The money didn't make. Okay, so let me tell you why I didn't leave before. I didn't leave because we were living in like this two bedroom townhouse, right? We have boxes everywhere. I'm talking about if you did not live in our house, you probably couldn't get in and out because we knew the path because we lived there. <laughs> so we were running a million dollar business in this tiny, wow. you know, yeah, we were living there. We had our children there. We had our business there and we were trying to leave. COVID happened and then we couldn't leave because I couldn't leave my job because in order to leave my job, I needed to have two years worth of tax returns mm. filed under a business. Mm. We had we didn't have two years yet. So I had to keep my job until we were able to purchase our new home. And then like two weeks after we closed, I quit. Right. But um, yeah, so that's why um, that's why I stayed so long. And I also stayed so long because this whole thing happened like so suddenly I almost thought it was a joke. Like I was just waiting for somebody to come and like be like, psych, you know, (laughs) so it's like. I really wanted to make sure, you know, before, like, I put myself on payroll, I wanted to make sure that, you know, David, I was broke for a long time, even though I was making six figures. Like, we had a lot of bills. We had a, we had three kids in daycare. We had car payments. We had mortgage. Loans. We got student loans. Yeah, we got credit cards. Your money. Don't just and mismanage your money. Exactly. Just, like, just, exactly. We don't, we, don't get, we don't necessarily get a lot of education on managing. So, like, even if we make six figures we just spend more exactly. i mean you're making six figures but you got debt from like 15 years ago mm-hmm. just carrying like, it think about that just you carrying carry it. debt from 16 years ago or 17 years ago and then child care think about how much you Three know how kids. many people go to work every day just to pay for daycare mm-hmm. that's what we were doing exactly in essence, you know what i mean you so know wow. we didn't we didn't touch none of our money from our business for the first two years and that's mm-hmm. another thing i tell entrepreneurs don't start making a little bit of money and start dipping into it. Like, mm-hmm. it, like we got this three people in our relationship. It's her, it's me, and it's Sonny. Sonny's our business. That's the third person in our relationship. We don't play with Sonny's money. 
Mm, I like when that. You, you're running mm-hmm. a business. You're not, this isn't for play. This isn't a game. That business needs to stand on its own. And I see a lot of people like, yeah, I'm going to do this with my business. I'm going to spend all my money with my business. You're not running a nonprofit. You're here to make profit. Yeah. Because what happens when you need to go get that real money? They want to see your numbers. Mm-hmm. And if you make him X amount of dollars, but you're spending all your money, why would I now be an investor in your business? Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. So all of that is kind of like level up, get enough money in your business account. I don't care if you got to eat sardines for the longest before you decide what you're going to do. In fact, you can take that money and put it back into your business so you go to the next level. Mm-hmm. And when you're ready to stop your job, you're ready to transition like me, then you're kind of like in a better situation. And you know, the um, obviously it's a transition. Let me ask you, when did you realize you were successful? Was you there know, a point? Mm, was there a, yeah. a, 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 like, yo, oh my gosh, I made this amount of money. Sometimes there's a wake up. There's a, oh my gosh. I think it was, for me, oh. I don't know about you. For me, it was when um, I have a friend. She's my um, kid's dentist. We go to go to dinner like, every once in a while and she buys products from us and we went to dinner one day and she was like Jill can I ask you something and I'm like yeah she was like um how much money y'all making and I was like "Uh, yeah I mean yeah no but I'm so happy for her because she's helped me shout out to Dr. D she's helped me like so so much because she's been in business for a lot longer you know has a successful dentist practice and I'm just now fiddling my way along right so she was like, how much money y'all make? And I'm like, D, this month we made like 20 grand. She was like, y'all made 20 grand this month? She was like, do you have an accountant? And I'm like, no, I don't need one. She was like, you need one. She was like, go talk to this guy. You know, here's the a number to my accountant. Go talk to him and he'll help you, you know, to get your business straight, get your money straight and everything. Because she probably knows I would have probably, you know, as soon as I realized we were making money, that money would have been <laughs> out of here. So you know, I dragged my feet on it, but eventually we went to him and, you know, he was like, so how much money are you guys making? And, you know, I told him and he's like, oh, let me see it. Pull it up. Do you have access? Because he's probably thinking I was lying. He was like, let me see. So I showed him the bank account. and He was like, why do you have all this money sitting in the bank? He fell out the chair. He was like, what? Yeah, like, he literally fell out the chair. He was we like, we didn't what? know. We were just we yeah. were just so busy pushing our product. Money was just going in the account. We, we made a conscious effort to keep our overhead very low because we're 40-something. At this point in life, David, you need to have some common sense. It's like, you know, we just made so many foolish mistakes financially just from not being, we didn't know, we didn't know any better. It's not like we were bad people. Like most black people, like most people, we just weren't familiar with how money works, mm-hmm. right? So um, he is like, this money's not insured by the bank at this point. He was like, what did you buy for like um, equipment and inventory? I'm like, you didn't buy nothing. nothing. Like he was like, you know, it's well, the last... Like, st- mixing yeah, and mixing and, and, and shipping and just yeah. like, you know, getting stuff out and we knew, you know, didn't have any idea like our profit margin or anything. We were just working in the business because it was just us for the longest eventually us and our kids, like our kids would wake up in the morning before school. I'm like, okay, we got L. I need you to pack these 30 bundles. Marley, I need you to wrap deep conditioners. I'm waking these, these kids are like 12 and 10. Mm. They're waking up at five o'clock. One's wrapping deep conditioner. The other one is helping me pack orders. We're leaving out the door at 8.30 to get them to school at nine. So I could get to the post office by 9.15 to get to work. Now I needed to be at work at 8.30, right? And Cole was also just a print. Just had a printer, print labels. My so, print at labels. the time we didn't. Now we have like um, we have like QR codes on our mm-hmm. bottle, so you could scan it and get to the instructions. For a long time, we didn't even have instructions, so we had a piece of paper that we would include with each um, with each package. Shout out to all the people that got the yellow the yellow piece of paper like still. That's so right, right, right. That's the classic, right? right, right. That's, that's the classic so right my six year old son, his job was folding the um, yellow papers to insert in. So. Every morning for us, and that's why, you know, like now I tell my husband, I'm like, you know what? I don't want to spoil these kids. You know, I feel like a lot of people, when they get to a point in their life where they have something, we do our kids a disservice because we give them everything because we didn't have that. Right. So I make a conscious effort to not spoil our kids. But when I think back at how those kids helped us when we was in the gutter, I'm like, man, I got to give these kids everything I got. Like for real, for real, like 
those kids were like, even now we're out here and they call like my, my daughter. How she old call- How old are they? So the eldest is now 16. I have a 14 year old and my son is nine. Gotcha. So she calls me this morning. She was like, mom, you have the interview today. Right. And I'm like, yeah, she was like, you're going to do so good. Like, you know, whatever. They're just so vested, you know, and, you know, people talk about generational wealth. And I think for us, we think generational wealth means leaving a bag of money to our kids. I die and you get all this. Generational wealth is leaving your kids the skill Mm -hmm. to learn how to do something. You don't got to leave them one cent, but leave them with a skill, show them how to do something. They will forever have money, right? Mm -hmm. They saw us, they saw me and their dad transition from the corporate world where, you know, we was like budgeting to go on vacation. We could only, you know, go this time of year because, you know, we couldn't get time off or we didn't have the money or whatever. To now we can get up and decide, oh, y'all want to go to Italy tomorrow? Let's go. You know what I'm saying? So they 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 see that and they, they, they were old enough, luckily, to understand that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're getting a masterclass in business. They're seeing all the L's we took, which aren't like, you know, they're L's, but I mean, I look lessons. We learn so much sure. stuff, right? So just having them, and it's not intentional. I'm not saying pull up with pen and paper and write down everything I'm doing. It's just them being in the atmosphere. It's that. just them, you know, living in that in that space and like, you know, okay, y'all on summer break. My daughters are on payroll. They're all on payroll because that's a tax break for us. So all the kids are on payroll and we play to their strengths, right? So my son is in charge of putting all the boxes in the container for UPS. That's his job. You know, um, the girls can like pack orders and like do other things. So we kind of play to their strength. And it's like, you know, my eldest came home um, a few months ago talking about her, her friend told her she can get a a, um, a job at Taco, what it, Taco Daddy. Taco Daddy. I'm like, girl, Taco Daddy. <laughs> and we got all these packages here. That need <laughs> right. to, you better come get all this payroll. Right. So it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, I feel really good because even if, even if God forbid, even if we don't have anything to officially leave for them, what we've taught them is so much more powerful and so much more valuable than any amount of money that we could leave for them. Yeah, they are, they are literally in the business. I mean, you're talking about, you got a business call to take. You don't tell your kids to leave the room. You stay right there in that room and take that business call with them. Mm. Um, when stuff goes wrong and your accountant is calling you, you stay right there and your kid will see right there, hey, this is what's going on. When a shipment goes wrong for, for a product that got to come to us, your kid is right there. I, I mean, for the longest, my son will ride with me in the back of the car to go to, to UPS, go to the post office and see the like whole process. Yeah. yeah. So he's seen, like literally they're seeing the whole process. Um, our, our daughters are literally seeing the whole process a uh, uh, son is seeing the whole process, and that's how you really build generational wealth is by showing them the process. All of the wins, all of the losses. Like you're not getting shielded from anything. You're mm-hmm. gonna you're gonna see this loss, and then we're gonna be like, but there's a lesson here. Yeah. You know, and you do that with everything that you're doing. Hey, what you reading this week, Dad? This is what I'm reading this week, and this is what it's about. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's the stock market? This is the stock market. This is crypto. I, son is almost 10 years old and he's like, he's like, he's heavy into crypto, heavy into the stock wow. market just because he's listening. He listened to your podcast. He knows you. Mm-hmm. He oh, does. He's like, yeah, he you're going to go talk he's to nine. that dude, David. Wow. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, he's like, like David wow. never sleeps. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> David never <laughs> sleeps. Audio books, all of that stuff. Um, I, I tell the story that was crazy to me. I didn't even notice. I'm driving him to school in the morning and listening to Bloomberg and they're like, man, Stocks are down. Stocks are down. And he said, man, seems like stocks have been down for a few days. He said, it sounds like a, bar, a bear market is coming. What? Ten he years old? Nine. He's nine. He's about yeah, to be ten. Me. Like, we've exactly. never explained to him what a bear market... Just, I mean, I didn't even know what a bear market was. I'm like, you know, there. yeah. He's, he's literally... He's soaking it up. He's just soaking it up, literally. When, when your kid comes to you and says, hey, if I buy enough shares of Sony, mm-hmm. can I own a company? Mm-hmm. Because I got a PlayStation. Wow. I said, yeah, but you're going to have to get a lot of shares. He said, okay, well, how many shares they got? So, <laughs> so I love a child's I'm mind. Like, you know, so at God. that point, so at that point it's like, yeah. man, you don't want to leave. There's no limitations. Yeah. Let me get all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, it's not 
forget, we want to leave your kids some money because you want them to be set up in life and we're all trying to figure it out, right? But we want to leave them with those little tools that they can then at 15, 20, 25 years start to say, hold up, I've seen this before. Okay, I'm going to go start my own business and go do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so that's important. So how many products do y'all have all together? Um, we started with seven and this is, this is the problem we have. So I'll do special drops, right? Like, like this cocoa butter was a special drop and now it's like added to the roster. This one, this one? The cocoa butter, oh, this, this one, one, right? Yeah. So I'll do special, I'm a very creative person. How many times can I put this on my beard? I like. <laughs> you want to put some more? As much You're as you want. You're not using the, yeah. As much David, as you David, it's going to grow for real though. I'm telling you. Like seriously, I want you to let me know, like for real. You like the smell of it too? Absolutely. It's very herby, but yeah. We're going to get you a grown man beard, man. How did this episode drop? I'm going to be out here. <laughs> so we have probably about um, maybe like 15 solid products. Really? I mean, yeah. We have what's a whole, the number one seller? Um, our number one seller is our hydration bundle. Hydration bundle. What's and that? So that's the bundle that women um, get when they have like dry hair because the, the biggest problem we get with women or even men, my hair is dry or I got hair loss or I'm trying to grow back. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> our hydration bundle and hair butter is a, um, a big seller. Our protein treatment is huge because that helps with um, hair loss and shedding. And that really took off during COVID because we had a lot of people hitting us up like the end of last year, early this year saying, my hair is coming out. I had COVID. And I'm like, okay, like I didn't put it together. Then after a while, I realized that people who had COVID, they were having these high fevers Don't for use extended. Because they be kind of, they won't on like YouTube, they'll mm-hmm. like block it. Okay. Yeah. So people who had it were like, you know, they had like high fevers and stuff like that. And um, they were having hair loss. And, you know, people from like all different demographics started reaching out to us like, you know, I heard about your product. I'm having hair loss, you know, for this reason. Do you have anything that can help? And our protein treatment and our acai bundle was like, man, that took off. And then we really started the demographic of people we started serving grew. We were getting white people, Indian people, like all different kinds of people who wouldn't typically use our products, you know, because, you know, it was targeted towards um, curly hair, you know, but um, yeah. So now it's like wide open. We have like white moms, just biracial kids um, reaching out to us. We have white moms who adopted black children. I know that's, a, that's a that's foster a thing care. Right they don't know what to do. They hair. Listen, I'm so proud. I think my proudest, one of my proudest moments was I taught this white lady how to do her black daughter's hair. Wow. And it's growing so good, David. <laughs> and I'm like, I've never met this lady in person. I was able to communicate with her through DM. And, you know, I just love this lady so much because she took in a child that was not hers, did not look like her. That child looked like me. Right. And our products are not cheap. For you, she could have easily went to a retail store and bought a $5 shampoo, but she's coming to us for a $40 shampoo to use on her daughter's hair. Mm. So that says, like, so much to me. And I'm just so very proud of her. And I'm, I have a special place in my heart for mothers. Because this whole thing started because of my need as a mom. So I'm happy for I'm gonna be so excited when your hair grows. Oh, but my wife I'm too. even yes, I'll be more happy for your wife. She be so, like, okay, I'll be well. more I'll be more happy for your wife when, you know, she uses the products and the, the baby's hair grows. Mm-hmm. You know, and she's now teaching the baby how to love on her baby's hair, you know. And when so, you're pregnant, doesn't it thin out your hair? Yeah, people have thin? postpartum, um, postpartum hair loss or even hormonal hair loss yeah. from being pregnant. But our protein treatment handles all of that. And people are wary of protein, but ours is made from wheat. It's a natural protein, it's a hydrolyzed wheat protein, and it works amazingly well for hair loss, breakage, all of that stuff. It's the one product you can use and you'll see results that day. Like, seriously, the, the shedding will like, yeah. Let me ask you, what do you think about rice water? I think rice water is a hype. Yo, because my wife be making it and it smells so bad. Because <laughs> you got to let it sit or something like that. I'm like, why is this stuff? You got to be careful with rice water because it's very heavy with proteins. And I feel like, like with any industry... We catch on to these fads. It's like rice water. It's chebe powder. It's sea moss. It's my thing is. Hold on, don't start talking bad about sea moss. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying Hold nothing on. bad about it. <laughs> and it, it works. Man, we love some sea moss. It works. I mean, it helps your immune system. Helps with all of that stuff. But I really feel like in any industry, there are things that come and go. Very faddish, you know. 
And I just stick to what works. I stick to nature. I stick to using things in their purest form the way God intended them. I don't break it down too much. When you open up our products, you can tell it's a shea based product. You know, you can tell you can see the herbs in the bottle, you know, and people are like, oh, well, you know, it smells herby. Well, it's herbs, yeah. you know, so um, it's, it's going to smell herby. Like, well, I mean, I, I'm it's sorry, natural it's stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a luxury line within that market. You're you, you're looking at um, products that may be like five dollars on the shelf. That's a forty dollar product. Yeah. And people, there are people because it costs us a lot for our yeah. ingredients. Yeah. The yeah. ingredients ain't cheap. That's what I'm us, they are not cheap. There's people who will message us and say your product is so expensive. Mm-hmm. That's all they'll say. Mm-hmm. And I'm and like, then, okay. And then they they'll, they'll beg sometimes because she'll be like, well. We don't we don't sell anything to anybody. We're not like, oh, buy my product. She's just gonna educate I'm you. I'm just educating you. you. I have it. You have a need. I have a solution. You want it or not? That's it. Yo, what is um mango butter? What does that do? Mango butter, mango butter is a lighter butter. It's not quite as heavy as shea for people that are allergic. Some people are allergic to shea, mm-hmm. shea butter. Um, so people who are allergic to like shea butter, it's a good alternative. It's not as heavy though. So it's a lighter oil, um, ideal for someone with maybe like, you know, looser curls and it's very good for your, um, skin and your hair as well. But we, we double dip on our butters. Like most of our products, we use like three different four kind of butters. We layer stuff. Mm. So it's super rich, super luxurious. And I think that's what separates us. Like, you know, um, people are very hesitant like when approaching our products. First of all, women in general, we are jaded. We've bought so much stuff that hasn't worked. If you open a black woman's bathroom cabinet, you'll see all the brands. Mm. All right. So they're very hesitant. In addition to that, you're telling me do you want how much for this? Like, I'm not paying that. I don't know you for nowhere. Like, do it work? Can I get my money back if it don't? You know, we get all of those questions. And in the beginning, I was very like, I would tiptoe around it. I'm at the point, David, you want it or you don't want it. You're going to be back at some point because, you that know, you're going to need it. <laughs> you know, I'm at that point right now. That comeback is so, um, yeah. Pink lotion. <laughs> don't go there, David. Don't <laughs> go there. <laughs> and that's another, but David, yeah. that's another thing, too. We don't talk about anybody else's brand. We don't. We don't. You even, just play in our lane, man. That's it. About all this stuff. I, I, y'all getting these pictures of all these. Images. We don't. We my, don't. My, my I see a live and die by. Uh, was it horse and mane or something yes, like that? Yes, yes, yes. Mane and tail. Mane and tail, oh, yeah. See, we know, we know yep. the people. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, yo, can we get a camera for Sarah? Or you got to go over there and buy Joe. Um, she, had, she had a question. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to keep you long. This was, I'm excited, really. Are you? I want to see the suite of products. Like, I want you brought, you probably brought with you. That's all I got. I got some stuff I can send you, though. We I have, mean, like, body washes, and we have the body wash that goes with this. Yeah, um, I need some soap. soap. Oh, okay. yeah. I make a mean oh, lemon yeah. turmeric bar. But those are exclusive <laughs> drops, though. Oh, yeah. And then, we got, and then we got a membership. We got a membership plan, too. What? Yeah, so, we just dropped our membership. Yeah. Can I work um, for y'all? Can I be like a... Um, you can. can I be an ambassador? So, yes. An affiliate <laughs> or something? <laughs> Let me get down, cause yo, I'm telling you, if my beard goes crazy, it's gonna go crazy. I'm <laughs> oh, trying to tell you. Uh, oh my god! I'm trying to tell you. I could just stay right. I'm looking at. I don't even have to look in. I could just look at it and tell the growth potential of that beard. Really? Yes, I'm good at what I do, David. Yeah, I could look potential. at it and tell. <laughs> yes. Sarah, what's up? Hi, friends. Hi. Hey. Um, so I am one of the people that absolutely oh, Reese, do some with that. Oh, camera. Well, go ahead. Just keep going. Just keep going. I'm one of the kinds of people that definitely believe in investing in self. And I believe in being the best version of ourselves that we can be. And so I get my hair washed every Wednesday. Like I have a wash day. I do all the things, but I struggle with psoriasis. Mm. And so for those of you that don't know, I just did a live about this yesterday. I feel like it's not a topic that's talked about enough. And one of the things that we do is we do apple cider vinegar rinses. Hold on real quick. What is, what is psoriasis? So for me, psoriasis is like, uh, it's like a placky, like, if you were to imagine like flakes on your scalp, it's not dandruff, it's thicker and it shows up in certain areas on my on my scalp. So if I don't take care of it, it gets wild. Like mm-hmm. it's literally gross. Like it to me, mm-hmm. I don't love it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I take such good care of my scalp, at least as, as good of care as I can. Um, I don't know if you ever saw Kim Kardashian. There's like a meme of her running down the hallway crying because she has psoriasis on her ankle or on her shins. And she's like, thanks mom, you ruined my life because I have psoriasis and this 
never goes away. And it's literally something that is autoimmune. It's an autoimmune mm-hmm. deficiency. I create too much yeast. I did all the mm-hmm. tests to figure out mm-hmm. what is going on. I have an over and over creation, however you would say that, That's of true. yeast. Mm-hmm. And it comes out on my scalp. Mm-hmm. That's the answer. I don't create enough elastase. That's my answer. I don't know about everybody else. But I say that to say, with your products, do you have any product that is focused on, that helps with um, scalp conditions? Oh my God, I'm so glad you asked. So my daughter has support dermatitis, or I said had, because she no longer has it, right? And support Seborrheic dermatitis. dermatitis. Yes. So it's very similar to psoriasis. It's like a sister situation, right? So um, hers was hormonal. I noticed that like when she got older, going through puberty, starting to um, secrete more oil, sebum in the scalp, it really flared up. We couldn't go three days without her flaking up. It was like around the perimeter of her hair. It was the same thing you described, those thick, yucky looking flakes, you know, that itch sometimes it would even bleed because she would dig into it and it's so bad. And I had been trying to create something for that girl for like a year and a half. And everything I created was a fail, right? It just didn't work. And I think God felt bad for me. I told you, David, like I I legit take these naps and I wake up and I'll dream about these formulations and I'll get up. And every it's happened with three products so far. Every single thing that I needed to make that product, I would somehow have in my house. I had the dream and I had been, I was over this um, scalp butter at this point. I was trying to create a scalp butter, something she could use on her scalp that would avoid the flare up, the multiplication of the cells on her scalp, right? And I was just over it. Tossed it in the trash, I was done. And um, I had this dream and everything I needed to make this product, I had in the house. I got up and I made it and I sat on it because I'm like, for sure. Just saying. Quick, it just seemed quick. too I'm, simple. I'm so sorry. Yes. Can you... Walk me through this dream, like you <laughs> I can't. You can't walk you through the dream. A little bit. Is it like give it a secret sauce? No, nah, I'm no, saying not no, the- no, no, not not the blend. But is it like <laughs> that's it, or is it like you're walking through? I don't know. Like I just want to see. Are you walking through a field of what that no. is? Like yo, this can't explain no. it. No. So it it's only happened to me three times, right? And the three times it's happened, so I have this rule. We don't sell anything that I haven't used in my house. Mm -hmm. Because when you buy my product and you come back and you tell me your hair turned blue, I need to be able, without a shadow of a doubt, to say that did not happen, right? So I don't sell anything that we don't use in our house. So when I have these dreams, I'm very weary because I've never used this product, right? But I'm saying in the dream, is it story form? Maybe I'm going a little too deep, mm -mm. but is there like, like it's a normal dream and Mm -hmm. then... You're seeing something and mm-hmm. you're like, yo, the part of the dream, that's it. Or is it? Yeah, the so ingredients just come to me. And I mean, it, it's so specific. I even know the amounts. Is it Five a ounces. Of, or is it a- no, it's God. Like, I know it's God. Like, I can't tell you how I know, but I just know. Like, I just wake up feeling like that's it. And I'm, I'm, I'm the doubt that I had for the year and a half prior to that. All the doubts are gone. That's it. Right. Mm. And. It's like the ounces are specific. Make this. This is it. I did it with this oil. I did it with the um, deep conditioner. And I did it with the scalp butter, right? And I had thrown all of those, you know, previous ones out because they wasn't working. And I made this one. And I was so like, I'm like, I was so scared maybe or so afraid maybe I had made it up in my mind. I'm like, "Mm," I sat on it. I use it on my daughter. And usually when you have scalp conditions like those, it's something that happens after the third day where the, I don't know what it is. For her, it was like after day three, these these flakes just started popping up everywhere. I used it and I greased her scalp with it and day three came and her scalp was clean. And I thought mm. for sure, well, okay, well, for sure it's going to pop up on day four. You know, day four came, nothing. They, I, I didn't wash her hair for three weeks. I kept on using this oil. I didn't wash her here. for. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't tripping. I just wanted to make sure I was not tripping. All right. So to that, we would have customers email us. Do you have anything for psoriasis? Do you have anything for scalp eczema? Do you have anything for um, support dermatitis? Well, I didn't have anything, right? I sent a sample. I went through the emails and I sent a sample to about five of those people. And I'm like, listen, I made this butter. I'm not sure how good it is. Can you try it and you let me so know? I no, David, I got to right know. Now. Like, this seriously, I'm not trying to sell nobody. This oil is $75. I 
I can't sell you a seventy-five dollar mm. product that I'm not sure is going to work. I got to be sure. Mm. I don't want them people coming for me. Mm. You know, I got. Listen, this is my integrity. This is my reputation. This is my hard work. I don't play with it. Yeah. So I sent that out to like five different people, and that they were like, "Oh my God, I can't believe this! Like, it actually works. It works so good." Scalp bundle. It's a clarifying shampoo. It's therapeutic grade tea tree oil, and we have a scalp butter which was directly from God that helps your scalp. And I'm saying that I know it sounds cheesy, but I promise you, that's exactly how the story happened. And people who have, like, I can show you the testimonials, hundreds of testimonials, yes. Could I still do apple cider vinegar rinses before I were to use the shampoo, conditioner, and then the butter? Listen. And any- does the butter leave your hair with a residue on your scalp or am I still going to be free and flowing? Free and flowing apple cider vinegar is natural. It's a natural product. Mm -hmm. As long as you're playing in the natural realm, I'm good. Apple cider vinegar is awesome because of it's so acidic. Yeah. Hair and skin love acidic products. And that's the problem that a lot of the store-bought um, products have because they have like preservatives in it. They're more on the alkaline side. Hair and skin really thrive in an acidic state. Mm -hmm. So whatever you can find that's on that acidic side, it's going to be good for your hair. What's the website? Um, <laughs> sunnyindemby.com S-U-N-N-Y-I-N-D-E-N Wait, S-U-N-N-Y I-N I-N D-E-N D-E-N B-I B like boy? Yes B-I-G-H Dot com Follow us on IG too Yeah Follow us on IG I mean, and people, listen Our customers, when they order, they order Man Like for real I'm you, like it's it's no there, joke. Bro. Like it's <laughs> like you talking about the soap. We'll have like when we do a drop, people people order like like soap. four or five bars of the soap at a time. We can't keep those soaps in stock. Yeah, because we wow. you know because it's limited edition items within the brand, yeah. and you know you get an email, or if you're on a membership list, the most important thing is building a community. Like we've managed to build a community. You don't have to sell to everybody. You just got to sell to your tribe. Yo, that's what I really love about y'all. Y'all just really gave a bar, too, because you don't build a successful company. One, you can't build a community if the stuff you're talking about isn't legit. Exactly. So you can make a lot of sales, but if you don't have a community, you got to hide from the people. You got to hide. You know, it's like you're selling something and it's not working. You're not free to go on Instagram Live. You're not free to, you hide in front of your emails, you hide in front of your DMs, you hide in from people in the street because your stuff doesn't work and you took these people's money. You know, you have to be authentic. You have to be true to your word. And I think that's a, a problem that a lot of small businesses have. And you know how people are like, oh, that's why I don't shop with black businesses or whatever. You know, we have to be people of integrity. You know what I'm saying? So... We're big on that. Man, I don't know if it's a placebo or what, bro. My, you feel, I do feel the tingle. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I I'm do. serious. Like, I'm serious. I'm not even lying to you, David. I feel it. Like, I do feel it. That's This, this is wild. Like, not even, like, not no cap. It's just... It really, I'm trying to tell you. I, it feels I'm good. trying to tell you. We sell a lot of that oil, not because it works, and it works very well. Yeah. We play, yeah. We, we play in our lane. This, this, this is, is our lane, lane right like, here. He, people will message us. Do you sell this? Do you sell that? No. We don't sell that. Mm-mm. People will message us asking us if we can make stuff for them. That's happened. Yeah, okay. That's happened before. Mm-hmm. And um, and if we're not comfortable with doing stuff, you know, like like we said, it's a family based business. So it's us, our children, it's our moms. You're looking at three different generations. There's no ego involved. We just want the product to be good. We want the presentation to be good. We want to really like put our arms around our community. And I think that's important. Like, there's no egos involved. Like, there is a hierarchy in the company. Gotcha. But if if you're a packer in our company and you have a great idea, oh, let's let's oh, go. Yeah. Oh, let's yeah. go. Are y'all going to be... Um, and obviously, you guys are, like, still building your business, but are y'all in the education space at all? Teaching people how to make natural... Um, No, we don't know. No. But we, we are working on a program where we're going to walk you through... Um, how to go from scaling your business from a base, from your basement. That's where we started in our basement. You know, we want to show people like how to do that, like how to scale your business from nothing. Cause I say nothing because we didn't even have a a budget when we started to like, you know, we now got our first warehouse, you know, um, multiple seven figures, just how to do that. Ah, I love this. Look, um, yeah. Okay. Let me, 
Let me do my commercial. Then we'll come back. Okay. You got questions about your interview? I'm ordering right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Sarah. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm on your website and I see the growth oil package. Um, will it leave if I'm putting oils? Because how I see it is on my wash day, my lady's going to do all of this stuff to my oh, hair. It's like a mm-hmm. whole day? Yes. It's a whole day. Well, well it's like hours. Use. It's I'm, I go in at hours. nine. I don't leave till like two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. What, uh, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Outside Mostly of- I'm sitting in the bowl. Because when you have the apple cider vinegar, you got to sit for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Then you do the, I do a deep conditioner root, and I'm about to switch. So I'm going to give you all a shot Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. I like my little setup. You're going to be happy. I'm excited about it. I'm excited. Then there's there's a deep conditioner, there's a shampoo, there's a conditioner, and all mm -hmm. of them sit on my hair for periods of time. So I'm really in the bowl for most of the time that I'm there, letting my scalp do my thing on my phone, talking to my lady. We do business. We we do all types of things. But... Yeah. <laughs> if you um, you have a wash day for the curls. <laughs> the hashtag poo. You're probably have, use soap. But, but, but we also have a lot of male. We also have a lot oh, of yeah. male uh, customers oh, yeah. too. We do. So it's Guys not just take women. care of their hair, David. Like, mm. yeah, yeah. Like we have a bunch yeah. of male customers. I mean, we had uh, the uh, the Hispanic dancer that oh, yeah, that's uh, beautiful weird. hair, and he and he, he got actually, that scalp um, too. We'll see. Like, we'll see it in our comments. They'll tag us and so stuff. So people tag us in our comments. Like, and they'll be like, hey, stuff. I'm using the product. It's so Oh, we've also been featured in Vogue and Elle magazine twice. What? I just want to put that yeah. out there. Yeah, just want to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you. But if you, you have to... scalp issues, I would get the scalp bundle and a deep conditioner. What? Deep conditioner. That's in the bundle? The scalp bundle doesn't have a deep conditioner. No, we sell the deep conditioner by itself. Perfect. So I'm going to get that. And then also, do I get the herbal growth oil? No, I don't want you using any oils on your scalp until you heal. I just want you using the scalp butter. Deep See, conditioner. That's a bar. She's saying, do I get an extra product? And she's saying, I don't want you to buy that extra product. Facts. I'm not selling you nothing I don't that you sell don't nothing. need. I don't sell nothing. I'm mm. not a good salesperson. I wouldn't even try because I'd sound phony. I love this. You got a very thriving beard, by the way. I appreciate it. We got a beard oil on the line, too. She don't sell nothing, but I'll let them know. We got a beard oil on the line, so, but, Okay, so what about the intense? Intensive this ain't, this ain't the oil. beard oil? That's not the beard oil, but for what you're trying to accomplish, David, I would stimulate. recommend, yes, you know it's going to definitely you? stimulate your follicles. He got that. That's the body butter he got, right? Yes. That body butter going to get you, man. Hide that Once from you your put wife, it I'm on, serious. it's over. On, and then watch to, to see the back. spots. You're like, after you start using it, watch to see if the spots fade. Yeah. You know what I was using? Um uh what is it? Farmers. The, the and the uh what's it called? Blue some blue magic? Nah, the blue uh, that was a drug, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I was cracked. Okay, wasn't it? That is blue magic is a green with the white oh, with the white yeah. writing. <laughs> <laughs> I was using those drugs, y'all. Yeah. No, 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 that's good. You just ran and now you <laughs> stay longer. No, the um the blue Epson is like hair something. Yeah, blue bonnet, blue blue magic. No, it's no, it's a shampoo. Oh, Selsun Blue. Selsun Blue. Yeah. Yeah, is that cool? No. We we don't we don't talk about other brands. Maybe helping me a little bit. We oh, let wow. we let them do what they do. We do what we do. Why were you using Selsun Blue? Because I have I have like spots. You know what's crazy? So I had like these spots right here. And even a, so, my barber told me, and then a doctor told me, like, use Celsius and Blue, and it, it actually lightened up the spots. Really. I'm going to send you a soap to use for that. I rocks at you, man. I'm serious. So, um, I forgot her name. Sarah. Sarah, we have a shampoo bar that I did not know. Um, it's a shampoo bar, but one of our um, customers had psoriasis so bad, it, like, was on the back of her neck. It would bother her. And she uses the shampoo bar. The, the, now she bathes with it. She has me bathing with it. Like, I didn't even... Yeah. It was a shampoo bar, but it's really... It's like a hair tonic. It's really good for your skin as well. So, um, it's probably sold out, but if... Um, yeah. I don't know. Check and see. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, okay. This, I'm, yeah, I'm so excited. Let me... Let me do a commercial real quick because uh, we've been here. We've been here. This we has been a good here. conversation, girl, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so look, man, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. TheMorningMeetup.com is the only organization that gathers every single day. We're not doing that right now. We're not doing that right now. I, okay, yeah, we will because I know you got your curls. Yeah, I got you. TheMorningMeetup.com. Um, we got, and I'll just tell y'all about it. It's We have a community that gathers every single morning, Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. And we'll have a theme for the month, but every call throughout the week supports the theme for the month. 
It is the most amazing community. You've never seen anything like it where people can grow and thrive, get information and connections. So I don't really, I don't sell the information like that, even though I'm teaching a lot of stuff and I'm on there every day. I'm teaching a lot of stuff. We have like guest speakers, which I'm going to need y'all to come on. on okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, but the, what's most important is the community. The community. We there are hundreds of people on this call every single morning that are hungry, learning, and like wanting to thrive as entrepreneurs, and they are making connections, and it's awesome. So, uh, we're you will be on the call, yes? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. So themorningmeetup.com or we got an app too. We got an app, the morning meetup app. Just go on your app store. Any app store, whether Google Play, Apple, just go on the app store, go on the morning meetup, and you'll see us. And it's an awesome community. Okay. Oh. So um, yes, I want to close this out, man. This has been very, very uh enlightening, very educational. Um, but I want to know where you see yourself in the next five years. What do you see yourself accomplishing in the next five years? And I'm asking the question for a reason. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to watch this five years from today and say, yo, you know, Jonathan, they came over here. They said they was going mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. five years ago. Mm-hmm. And they did. Mm-hmm. So give me your predictions. You go first, Joe. You know what I want? You know how you go to these hotels? Mm-hmm. And I think most people in my space aspire to be in retail. It's not a goal that I have. I love e-commerce. I love the e-commerce space. I love the control that we have. I love that I can keep our ingredients authentic. I can keep our ingredients natural. I love that no one else gets to tell us, well, you know, you need to water this down or boost that up. We can kind of do things on our own terms. But you know what I like? I love a good vacation. I love a good hotel, right? So I love when, you know, when you go to the hotels and you see the little the little bottles of shampoo mm. and body wash and body. Wouldn't it be dope if you went to a hotel and got a little, um, some cocoa butter, body butter, like yeah, in your yeah. bathroom? Like, I really want to, um, I really want to do that. I also love like decor and like, um, pillows and throws. So I could definitely see like a home line at some point. Um, that's something that I'd, I'd love to do. And maybe like even a, like a, manufacturing facility where we could actually like really do everything for ourselves and maybe even other brands, you know, partner with other brands that want to use our facility. So um, that's really what, yeah, that's where I'd see us. That's what I'd want to do. I want you to go into a hotel in Greece and see the sunny and them be little products in the bathroom and stuff. That's going to happen for sure. Yes. That's going to happen for sure. What you got? Um, exactly what she said. Uh, just growing the business, but still keeping it really authentic um, and really helping other entrepreneurs. I think we we really need to get in that space and just tell our story more. Like we don't do we don't do press, really. This is this is probably the, the first <laughs> and second press we've done. We don't do press. So just telling our story more to encourage people and definitely doing a manufacturing plant, scaling. Uh, so that's 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 huge. Uh, we're we're heavy into the art space, so definitely do something in that space too. But um, just grow, man. Just grow and try to figure it out. Like you, you're only to where you are right now, and you don't know what the next level is. So you go got you got to go get that information to get to the next level. I love it. So that's 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 what I we're doing. Good stuff, man. Well, look, man. I I appreciate y'all coming by. Yes, this has been a we love that. absolute pleasure. Well, thank you, David. So my takeaways is one, I'm about to ask my wife if she really know what her hair looks like. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't get us no, in listen, trouble man. now. Listen, don't get us don't in start, trouble. Don't start no trouble, man. <laughs> no, but it's I mean that's that that that's a really valid thing. I mean it have a conversation with her too. Be sensitive because a lot of us, you know, a lot of us I'm women, we're, funny. no, don't I'm be funny. funny. Like it's a sensitive conversation for some people, so yeah. tread lightly. Don't yeah, get you know my wife has beautiful hair though. I love her. Hair. Okay, don't get put on the couch. No, real quick, who that man? This is Harriet Tubman. Did you say who that man? I hate that I said that, man. No, this, no, no. No, this is Harriet Tubman, and I love wearing this piece. <laughs> Dude, like, trash. this is crazy. Let me see, because I didn't look at it. Don't it look like her? Look like her. Yeah, right? I was far yeah. away. Tell him, the, tell, him, tell him the designer, <laughs> too. Um, that Johnny is Nelson. You got, a, you got Harriet Tubman on you. That's Listen, hard. it's Jesus underneath. So the one underneath is a cross. And then Harriet, because 
I just love everything Harriet embodies. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like a superhero, like I could free everybody. Mm-hmm. You know how she freed all them people? Yep. And she was like the one she didn't free, didn't know they were slaves. Yeah. That's just how I feel some days. Like I could really free us from this hair bondage that we go going through. Mm-hmm. So I just love, I just love Harriet. Tell so. her the design. Tell them, tell them the design. I'm Johnny so. Nelson. Johnny Nelson designed this. He's on um, awesome. Instagram. I also have Marcus Garvey too. So I switch him out sometimes. You know what I would think you would have? Who I think you would have? Who? Yes. Bob Marley. No. Who? Um, TJ, um, Matt, Madam CJ Walker. Yeah. You know what's so weird? You Madam CJ Walker right now. You know, I've never watched a movie. <gasps> she doesn't want to. I've never watched wanna, it um, because this oh is why God. I don't. She, this she is she why I've wanna. never watched it. You know how sometimes your subconscious mind is so powerful. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you're blazing your own trail, you start emulating and mimicking what other people. That's real. I just want to blaze my own trail. So for that reason, that's why I haven't watched it. Maybe when I'm retired and done with the space, I'm like, all right, you know what? Let me see what she did. But by then, my mark is going to be made. So whatever I do. We don't even follow the other hair care brands. We don't. Listen, we will go somewhere and see furniture and go, oh, that's dope. I like the way they package that. That's Whatever industry you're in, don't follow those people. Mm. Follow all the other industries and see what's good in different industries. That's good. I follow people who make lawnmowers. Like, it's just inspiration. Like, I make hair products, but mm-hmm. I don't need to follow hair brands. I don't want them in my psyche. I don't want them in my space. Dang. I just want to, I don't. I'm doing something completely yeah. different. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, the fact that you're saying that, it's really, because... Like it's it's some people that do what I do, and I'll see them do something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I need I to should do, do that. that. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. But if I didn't see it, I'd have probably thought of an amazing exactly, other exactly, which is yeah. why I haven't watched that movie. Yeah, you might be like one of my favorite people. Oh, that means like, a lot. Thank yo, you, because I know you meet a lot dope, of people. Bro. She's dope. She's she's Thank dope. No, that's why I you. know she dope. <laughs> I know she dope. Man, well, I locked it up listen, years ago. Listen, right, pretty- I was a child bride, David. I'm like. <laughs> I was a child bride. No, I'm no, like, no, but, but, <laughs> right. but to be honest, to be honest with you, you got to protect the queen, mm-hmm. and the queen got to protect the king. Mm-hmm. We can't do nothing mm-hmm. by being separate. I'm be honest with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're talking good. So mm-hmm. she she can rise to the highest level by herself, and I can rise to the highest level by myself. But imagine if we can do it together. Yeah. Right. Imagine that. There's no limitation. Mm-hmm. So protect the queen at all costs and protect the king at all costs. And I would say this to entrepreneurs. If you have somebody in your household that does not subscribe to your dream, you're in trouble. Mm. I'm not talking about somebody who doesn't understand your dream because there's people in your family that won't understand your dream. That's your dream, right? But you got to have people that support your dream even if they don't understand your dream. That's key. Mm-hmm. So... Protect the like, queen. Like, yeah, like, I know this man's dream was not to churn shea butter. He didn't have that anywhere, you know? <laughs> it's like, but when he saw me struggling, when he saw me, like, oh, my God, this is something she really takes seriously. This is something that she's really passionate about. We be in that garage working it out. We put on David Never Sleeps and we go at it, you know? So it's like, he's just, uh, I commend him a lot because people are like, man, you know, he don't feel funny with, like, he has no ego. Like we're working together for like a common cause. It's not me against him. It's it's us together. We're stronger together. You know, and I think that's the one thing that our community doesn't understand. The black woman feels like, you know, you want to be the strong, independent woman, which you should be and you can be in your own right. But if you have your king next to you, if you have somebody working with you side by side, y'all are y'all are unstoppable. Mm. Y'all are unstoppable. We need to yeah, learn that for real. real. There's a whole bunch of claps being started right now. <laughs> Yo, but thank y'all so much, man. And oh, you actually, are. you actually kind of jumped ahead of me because I was going to have you close out. So you got to give us another word because you just went crazy. <laughs> oh. um, but uh, yeah, please, uh, again, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Um, and um, please let everybody know how to get in touch with you and uh, close out with a word of wisdom. Okay, so our website is... Um, sunnyndemby.com. You can follow us on all our social media platforms at Sunny and Demby. That's S-U-N-N-Y-I-N-D-E-N-I-B-H Sunny and Demby. Um, yeah, dot com. And word of wisdom. Um, let me think. Um, 
the, and on Instagram is Sunny and Denby. Yes, right? Sunny and Denby as well. S U N N Y S U N N Y I N D E N. Yes. Um, word of wisdom. Yeah, our tribe, our tribe rolls deep for real. Tribe, tribe. They roll deep. Like they support. Listen, I could go out there and sell Kool Aid and water. They would buy it. Like <laughs> seriously, our tribe rolls deep. Um, word of wisdom. So a, a couple. I'll do two. Right. So the first one is. And this is something that I wish that I had known when I first started. Don't expect the people that know you to support your dreams initially, right? Exactly. It's going to be a lonely journey. You know, you know you're doing it right when you feel isolated. When you feel like, well, I ain't talking to my friends no more. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, they ain't calling me back. Or I, you don't even have the desire to call them because you're changing as a person. You're growing, right? Mm -hmm. And the place you're going, they can't appreciate that. And they can't come with you because it's your journey. So if you've, I, I felt like so alone sometimes. I felt so isolated and I didn't understand why. And it's because I was growing as a person. And also be a person of your word. Like be, be full of integrity, be honest, be truthful. When you're building a tribe of people, you want people that trust you. You want your word to be bond. And as business owners, as small business owners, we need to be able to stick by what we say. We need to be able to have our community trust us, you know, so we don't have to hide from the people, you know. So that takes that goes a long, long way. And another thing is build a community early. For sure. Honey. I didn't realize the value of community until like, you know, the last year and a half. But a community could take you really far. So build a community early. And uh, yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. I think word of wisdom, I would say I probably got a few. Like we go back and forth with all of our few. I think everybody should write down kind of like what their their things are in life. Uh, I think one for me is never get too high with the highs, never get too low with the lows. Mm. Always be on an even feel. Like when you think you're winning, don't get too high. When you think you're losing, don't get too low. Just keep it even all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, Another thing I would say is feed your mind. Feed your mind. Once you start to feed your mind, you start to like put these numbers and these caps of what you think success is, right? And as you feed your mind, you realize, hold up, there's no limitations. I thought that was big. That's, no, I'm not doing that anymore. So definitely feed your mind and you start to look around and you see all these successful people. Um, Nike just celebrated 50 years. How many people we know is 50 years old right now? A lot of people, right? Nike just celebrated 50 years. That's not that long ago that a multi-billion dollar U.S. company is only 50 years old. Walmart is just a family of Waltons. That's not a hundred year old company. So just imagine what you could do. Wow, Feed good. your mind. I'm telling you, take all them limitations off. Listen to a podcast every day. You're going to work, right? Get in the car, cut off that music. Just listen to a podcast every day. Audio book, whatever. Audio books, podcasts. Just keep on Interviews. feeding your mind. I listen to music to stop listening to podcasts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, man, I got to go listen to this new yeah. album real quick because I've been listening to too much of this. Mm. Like, just keep on feeding your mind. And then you start to take these limitations off. And then you start to see these other people's stories. I love it. And then you're like, hold up. That's not that long ago. Apple computer is not that long ago. That's not a 200-year company. Some dude did this in his garage. That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Golly, man. Look, man, thank y'all so, 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 so much. I know um, not only me, everybody in our studio audience and people that's watching are inspired. So, thank y'all so much, man. So, do y'all do y'all something a favor. Make sure y'all follow me. Get y'all some products, okay? Because uh, my beard about to start flourishing. Yes, you know I mean? yes, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am out here. So, um, no, thank y'all so much. And uh, also, do yourself a favor. Go get you some social proof, meaning go build something. But it's very, very important that after you build it, you go back to your community and you teach somebody else how you did it. It's the only way our community grows. We are out of here. Peace. Yes, sir. I want to invite you to pick my brain. Mine too. Mine too. Yours too? Mine too. Yours too. Take okay, you guys. Brain. We are so excited because we just dropped our newest podcast series called The Brain Picker Podcast. David. Oh, it's going down. You get to pick our brain. You have a business idea, a concept. You're stuck. You can't get off the ground. You need the advice of seasoned, experienced entrepreneurs. Not only entrepreneurs that are practitioners, but we got a lot of 
people that we've been coaching all over the last decade. All over the globe. They got receipts. Not just that. You never know where your next investor might be hanging out and the word on the street is we got all the connections. That's a big fact. We got all the connections. So if you want to sit down with us and pick our brains. In front of our audience. And we're letting you pick our brains. We won't even talk bad about you for doing it in front of our audience, bringing your business maximum exposure. Find the link somewhere around here, wherever you see it. It's there. And apply. Right now. To pick our brain. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs>